So the first intention she had was to have children. One of the first primary intentions was to have children. And she created children in her image. In other words, she created them with masculine and feminine qualities. So we have these souls, which you could say are little images or children of God, of which you and I are one half of one. And that soul in that state only knows a few things. Let's look at what it knows. Firstly, it's yet to experience life. So it does not have any experience at the instant. I'm talking about the instant of your creation. Do you remember the instant of your creation as a soul? I don't either. Right? Because the truth is that none of us remember it because we're not, we weren't conscious of our existence at that point. Does that make sense? So they are, they have no consciousness at that point. Consciousness at that point. Right? At that point, they also are not, they're not self-aware. <laughs> Sorry? Well, they're not self-aware yet because they've just been created but they don't know they've been created. Mm -hmm. yeah. Alright? So they're not self-aware. And by the way, that also means that they don't know how to make decisions at that point either. Doesn't it? How can you make decisions if you're not self-aware? All decision making comes about from being self-aware. So if that's the case, you could say they don't really have any, there's no free will at that point. That's challenging, hey? How many have been told that there's free will at every point? Yeah. There's no free will. Think about it. How can you know you've got free will when you don't know yourself and you're not self-aware? Does that make sense? So it's very, very hard to have free will and be able to exercise that free will. So what these souls living in a location of the universe need to do, and this is part of the process God created, was they need to do a thing called incarnate. Not the one you're thinking of, okay. no. The one you're thinking of is to do with soul attractions or the law based on the law of attraction. Yeah, and no, they, they are not a, they are all uh, living in a certain place of the universe where one day you will see them actually, if you progress to a certain point, you will actually see these souls and what's happening to them. Have you seen them? Yeah. What do they look like? Um, if you could picture, uh, it's very hard to describe most things in human terms, right? But if you could picture a ball with sort of a, almost like a chink down the middle of the ball, but with this huge amounts of energy flying off this ball, but also energy working its way between each half as well. That is the soul in terms of how you see it. Yeah. It's not how you experience it. It's quite different. How you're experiencing it is right now how you are experiencing your soul. But how you see it when you're looking at one, is, is how, that's how you can see it. You see that only when you get to the 22nd sphere of the spirit world, the 22nd dimension. We'll talk about that in a minute. Alright, so they're going to go through this process of incarnation. What happens is the soul splits into two. Not at the same time. When I say, obviously the split occurs at the same time, but the incarnation process is Mum and Dad have sex, create bodies. There's two bodies created at the time of conception. One body is the spirit body. And the other body is the material body. And if it's a female half of the soul, then obviously the bodies will be How many of you feel you were a male in your last lifetime? 
mean, if you're female now, yeah, where you're being heavily influenced by a male spirit, because it's actually impossible for you to change the sex of your half of your soul and the sex of its attraction. Is that why you get some males who are very feminine? Um, the split of the soul is very, it's like, have you seen the a standard distribution graph where you have, I don't know if you know much about mathematics, nobody liked mathematics when they were in school. <laughs> no? okay. The laws of statistics basically state that it, there's a 90 percentile range of anything. So if we, took, if we look at a, at a scale, which is the degree of masculinity versus the degree of femininity, and I'm talking about the complete soul here, not the soul half. The complete souls are obviously can be very masculine, can be any range in between. Does that make sense? The complete soul. Now if it's in this range here, the soul separates into two halves that are attracted to feminine bodies only. They still have masculine and feminine qualities, but the bodies that they're attracted to when they split are going to both be feminine. On this side, they'll both be masculine. In between, there's going to be a large variety. So some males will have a lot of femininity, some females will have a lot of masculinity. Yeah? But the body you're attracted to will be the same every incarnation. <coughs> right? We talk a lot about reincarnation because there's a lot of things I'm going to say about reincarnation that are going to severely challenge you. Right? Okay. Yeah. It's when you actually do um, into a, into that into a like male or female body, yep. it, is it going to be exactly the same or you've got to have new experiences? Um, a lot of people feel that there is this process of having to have new experiences. The soul needs to reincarnate to have new experiences. And the reason why is because it's learning issues of karma. How many of you feel that it's to do with karmic, working through karmic issues? Quite a number do that one? All right. Well, the truth is that you don't have to work through karmic issues doing this. And in fact, yesterday we spoke to some spirits, and some of you were here, who actually were working through their issues on earth in the spirit world, and they haven't come back to the earth to do that. So the truth is, the reason to return onto earth is only one reason. And that's love. There's no other reason to return to birth. Now, I will explain to many of you who are having previous life experiences <coughs> what's actually going on. And it's up to you whether you want to accept it or not. But my suggestion is to investigate it. To investigate whether what I'm saying is true to you. Does that make sense? Let yourself investigate it. Because there are lots of other potentialities other than the one you're thinking of. If you believe you have a past life, and that past life was a male or you know, or a multiple past lives, and it's highly likely that you have a number of spirits around you who are feeding you information in order to maintain a connection with you, and we'll talk about that as well. 